welcome back to our channel we will start the gross anatomy of thorax and today's class is the introduction to thorax those who have not subscribed to the channel do subscribe now keep watching the videos to have the continuation of the classes thoracic cage presents an osseo cartilaginous elastic and conical cavity so this is the thorax it is osseo partly cartilaginous so it is elastic and structure is conical the inlet being narrower than the outlet so this is the inlet which is being narrower than the outlet on cross section it is reniform in adult if you see take the cross section in the mid thoracic region it is reniform in adult the mid sagittal diameter being di narrower than the para sagittal diameter in the newborn however the shape is rounded on cross section now we will see the boundaries of thorax boundaries of thorax behind if you see so this is the behind bodies of 12th thoracic vertebrae so these are the boundaries behind and posterior parts of the ribs so these are the posterior parts of the ribs extending up to the posterior angle so this is the posterior angle of the rib so up to the posterior angle now we will see the front boundary of the thorax so this is the front boundary in front sternum which consists of manubrium body and cephoid process manubrium if you see it lies opposite the bodies of t3 and t4 sternal body lies opposite to so this is the sternal body lies opposite to t5 to t8 manubrio sternal or sternal angle this is the sternal angle corresponds with the lower border of t4 and projects forwards forming an important landmark so this is the important landmark to count the second rib so the way to count the second ribs is from the sternal angle cephis sternal joint so this is the cephis sternal joint corresponds with intervertebral disc between t8 and t9 it is replaced by bone after 40 years this sternal angle is replaced by bone after 60 years so this is the anterior boundary entire sternum and also the anterior parts of the ribs and their costal cartilages costal cartilages are not given in this so here it will be having the costal cartilages so we have seen the front boundary and behind boundary of the thorax on each side so you are having on each side 12 ribs so this is the first rib second rib so like this if you count 12 ribs and their cartilages separated by 11 intercostal space this is the first intercostal space second intercostal space third intercostal space fourth intercostal space fifth sixth seventh like that 11 intercostal spaces last two spaces so these are the last two, two spaces they are not closed in the front they are open in the front the intercostal spaces are occupied by intercostal muscles vessels and nerves so these are the on each side boundaries of the thorax we have seen behind front and on each side now we will see the inlet of the thorax inlet is this is the inlet reniform in shape measures about 5 cm in anteroposterior 
and 10 cm in transverse diameter. The inlet slopes downwards and forwards bounded behind by the body of behind by the body of T1 vertebra. So this is the behind boundary at the sides by the first strip and its costal cartilage in front by the upper border of manubrium sternum. So this is the boundaries of the inlet of the thorax. Sternal end of the rib. So this is the sternal end of the rib lies about 3 to 4 centimeter lower than the vertebral end. So this is the vertebral end of first strip and this is the sternal end of first strip. It is about 3 to 4 centimeter below. Outlet Outlet is bounded behind by the body of the 12th. So this is the body of the 12th vertebra behind by the body of 12th vertebra at the sides by the 11th and 12th ribs and in front by the 7th, 8th, 9th costal cartilages which will form the costal margin forming an infrasternal angle. The outlet is closed in the living by the diaphragm. So here it, the thoracic outlet will be closed. That is the partition between the thorax and below it will be called abdomen. Thoracic diaphragm which forms the floor of the thorax. So functions of thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity contains heart and lungs which are the essential or organs of respiration and circulation. Even some of the subdiaphragmatic organs are sheltered beneath the costal margins like liver, stomach and spleen. So these are the important functions of the thoracic cage. We have seen in detail thorax, thoracic cage, boundaries, inlet and outlet of the thorax. We will see the intercostal spaces muscles in the next video. Those who have not subscribed to the channel do subscribe now. Keep watching the videos. Thank you.